Hello everybody, I'm Nick and I recently made a video talking about the brand new type of grid being added in .NET 9 and it's coming in Preview 7 called UUID version 7. And I very quickly showed you that in order to start using that new grid, all you need to do, and I have Preview 7 installed, is say grid.create version 7 and this still creates a new GUID. And what's so special about this GUID? Well, it's special because this GUID is chronologically uh, sorted. So it takes time into account. And if I go ahead and I say, yeah, create uh, a bunch of them, what you're going to see is that they will all, even though they're new, they will all start with the same few bytes, indicating time in milliseconds. And that can be overridden by you providing the daytime offset um, on the constructor or on the method declaration. Now, that's nice and all, but many of you mentioned in that video that even though this is coming and it's amazing that we're getting it and it's mapping straight into a GUID and there was some criticism too, but I wanna address the functional aspect of this feature. Even though everything was great, we kinda had that already with something called a UL ID. Now, in case you don't know, ULID, not UUID or GUID, stands for Universally Unique Lexicographically Sortable Identifier, which kind of doesn't make sense from an acronym perspective, but it makes sense from a logical perspective, because the idea of this type of ID, as with Snowflake ID as well, and as with many types of IDs in distributed computing, especially, or in computing that the database needs to not be too fragmented because that can cause issues when those IDs are used as primary keys, especially in RDBMSs. Well, the same type of concept is used here. What's the use case? Well, you have a UUID that can be one of many cases and version seven is not mentioned here, which is what this thing directly competes with. But as the spec page of ULID mentions, and uh, UUID can be suboptimal for many use cases because it isn't the most a character efficient way of encoding 128 bits of randomness. We could be more efficient on space. Um, version one and two is impractical because you require access to unique stable MAC address. So nobody's really using V1 and V2 anyway. Uh, V3 and V5, again, some more unusual types of UUID uh, require unique seed and produces randomly distributed IDs which can cause fragmentation in many data structures, which is one of the biggest criticisms of UUID. They cause fragmentation leading to performance issues. And the UUID v4, which is basically what GUID is by default, uh, provides no other information other than randomness, uh, which again can cause fragmentation in many data structures. So we need to address that issue of data structure fragmentation by providing something that is sortable and time is a great way uh, to bake that into account, especially in cloud computing. That's how basically anything that does IDs in today's ecosystem is doing IDs. Maybe they're not UL IDs or maybe they're Snowflake IDs or maybe it's whatever Stripe is using, but in some capacity, it's the same concept. So UL ID, which looks like this, as you can see over here, uh, has compatibility with the 128-bit uh, UUID and where UUID imagine GUID as well. But they also have tons of unique UL IDs per millisecond to address that potential class because you don't need to check a database to see if a UL ID exists. You assume it doesn't exist because the chance of it existing is astronomical. And the great thing about this is canonically encoding it. Uh, it can be encoded as a 26 character string as opposed to a 36 character UUID. Now, you can still store it more efficiently, the UUID I'm in, but even having a great default is just a great way of dealing with this. Um, it's case insensitive, no special characters, so URL safe, which is always amazing. And then monotonic sort order uh, correctly detects and handles the same millisecond. So if two IDs get generated in the same millisecond, don't worry about it. It's baked into the spec. Now, this is just the spec, but what's great about this spec is that many people had went ahead and they made implementations on different languages. So you have many in .NET, we have two in .NET, one in C Sharp, uh, we have Kotlin, Julia, you have basically for any language, there's a ULID and ULID is very, very widely used. In fact, in C Sharp and .NET, we have this, which is the most popular package. Again, I'm going to link in the description down below. Give it a start if you like this package. I think it's a great, great package. And if you don't want to wait for .NET 9 to be able to use this, you can simply install this new Git package. And there's many great things about this. Well, the first one is that it is very widely downloaded. It has 4.5 million downloads, so it's very widely used. It's very much alive and up to date. And the best thing about it is it is extremely performant. 
In fact, if I go back into my code base and I go and I say ULID and I install that NuGet package, then as you're going to see, uh, I can simply say ULID dot new ULID, very much like the GUID uh, instance. Now, it is not a GUID, it is a ULID, which you can use in your objects as the ID type. Uh, and if I say console dot write line ID and I say run it, you're going to get that syntax you saw before. And if I say, hey, let's just have a few of them, obviously many of them will be generated in the same millisecond because it's a very efficient operation. But even then, as you can see, there's uniqueness based into that. So yeah, we have these bytes be time based and what you see here is the time in some form, but then you have uniqueness past that. Now we mentioned in the previous video, and if you haven't watched it, link down below or to right on your screen to get an introduction to version seven, UUID version seven. The way to generate that is like this, but if I go ahead and I say that I want to generate a ULID, so I'm gonna say ULID over here, and I'm sure this will cause a few clashes. So I'm probably gonna have to say system.ULID dot new ULID, here you go. Then I can use that benchmark too to see how it compares not only to the brand new GUID, the V7 type of GUID being added, but also how it compares to the traditional one, because we saw in the previous video, and spoiler alert, that the new way of doing GUID, the version 7, is actually twice as slow compared to the first one. So how is this thing that does the exact same thing uh, comparing to version 4 or the original one we had? So release mode, run the benchmark, and let's take a look. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that the most requested course regarding architecture is finally released on Dome Train, and it's called From Zero to Hero Vertical Slice Architecture. It is one of the most popular architectural patterns, and many people move from other architectures into vertical slices. So this insanely good six-hour course made by brand new author Kevin Docs, which you might already know from his Pluralsight courses, is now live on Dome Train, and it's going to be one of many from Kevin, which I'm very excited to have over on Dome Train. In these six hours, Kevin will take you from knowing nothing about vertical slices, and he's going to teach you everything there is to know about them with practical code, examples, diagrams, and so on. It's an amazing course. I use it myself to really refresh my knowledge and adapt it for Dome Train. So Dome Train itself is using things I learned from Vertical Slice Architecture course, which is just amazing. So to celebrate the launch, the first 100 of you can use discount code VERTICAL20 at checkout to get 20% off. It's an amazing opportunity to get started with the topic, mainly because there isn't that much professionally made training content around there. So link below now, back to the video. So results are back and let's take a look at how ULID performs. And as you can see, ULID actually performs even faster than the built-in GUID, the V4 version, the one we had for all these years. And of course, it's twice as fast as the V7 that does the exact same thing. So ULID is an amazing, amazing package. Of course, the V7 GUID hasn't really released yet. It's still in preview, so I can't really judge it since Microsoft is still working on it. But from what we've seen from the way it is being generated, as we saw in the previous video too, it's kind of not as efficient, I think, as it could be, but still pretty efficient. So better performance, same functionality. Why would you use the V7 one? Well, the reason why you would use it is because it is a good. It maps straight into a good. So if you want to start using it in your C-sharp application, you don't have to fundamentally change everything about it. But you don't really have to do it for the ULID either, because if we go back to program.cs, I can say GUID ID and I can say ULID dot new ULID. And then there's the two GUID conversion, which of course creates a GUID on top of the ULID, but it is doing it very, very efficiently using hardware acceleration where possible. It's a very, very, very well written. Like the author of this library is so, so good. Um, and that is still very efficient. How efficient? Well, let's take a look at GUID from ULID. So I'm going to say all that and then I'm going to say to GUID, change it to a GUID and then run the benchmark again. So let's just revert all that and let's go ahead and run it. So how does that compare? Well, it is still as efficient as the V4. That two GUID method is so well written. This library is so much optimized for performance that Honestly, you don't really need to wait for that new GUID to come from Microsoft. 
you can simply use ULID. Honestly, this is the best way to go about this. And I wish I knew about this library sooner so I could have compared it in the first video. It is, I think, the way to go. And if you're using this already, thank you so much for mentioning it in the comments. If you have an alternative to this, please leave a comment down below and let me know because I really like digging into these new types of IDs. Honestly, using something like this is a lifesaver for distributed systems, especially defragmentation and so, so many use cases. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about UL ID and do you have an alternative like Snowflake ID? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.